Hi there, welcome to my build of this 800mm wingspan combat control line trainer. Now, this was designed and supplied by Tim Hobbins at Hobbin Hobbies. And I've got to the stage now where it's almost ready to cover. There's just a couple of small jobs. I need to actually attach the, or fit the uh, bell crank. I've got the lead outs that I need to couple up. Got the fuel tank, which I need to secure into, oops, let me just change hands. Secure into this location here. You can see there's a recess in the plywood and then that needs to be held in with some 316 balsa. So I've dug some bits out of my scrap bin, which I'll be using. And the only other thing I believe is to put some weight on the outside edge. Now, Tim recommends to use, got the plans here behind me, I was just looking at that. Tim recommends using two one pence, English one pence coins. Well, I've weighed those and they're about seven grams. And I've got some nuts here, some, I don't know, they look about six mil metric nuts, which weigh seven grams. So I'm gonna be sticking those onto the outside edge with some epoxy. Just seems better to use nuts. And to be honest, with the hole in the middle and the thread, it will probably hold onto the epoxy better than the coins. Once that's done, I'm ready to cover it. And that will be really interesting to see that start to, uh, start to really look like a wing. Once the wing's covered, we then need to fit the elevator, which I'm not sure where it is at the moment. Oh, it's over there in a box. And we've got the pod for the engine. Now we're not, we fit that over the actual covering and then we mount the engine based on where we need to put it to get the CG right. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to get on now and sort this bell crank lead out and get the fuel tank fitted and then we'll get it covered. Well I've now got those few little jobs done and I'm ready to do the covering. I've got the weight epoxied onto the outside edge, got the fuel tank in nice and secure and done the bell cranks and, uh, and, and connected those lead outs. Now with regards to the lead outs I've copied a method used by Tim Hobbins and he's got a YouTube channel and I'll include the link below the description of this video which shows how he does that and that's, that's essentially how I've done it. I've got the horn on the elevator here, ready to go, and I'm going to be covering the wing and the elevator first, and then I'm going to be sewing it on. This is a technique I've never used before, so that will be quite interesting. I've got myself some quite, um, quite strong nylon thread. I think it's nylon polypropylene, um, so I'm going to be using that. Now, the covering material I'm going to be used, using is solar text, this red solar text. Again, this was provided as part of the kit from Tim, and uh, I've never used solar text, so it'll be quite interesting to see how that goes on. And Tim advises that once it's covered, I give it five coats of polyurethane varnish. And this is what Tim uses, so I'm gonna use that, the same thing. And this is uh, Wilco Quick Drying Varnish. It's a, a, a water-based uh, varnish if you're in the UK. If you're not, then, um, then I, I guess a similar kind of product. But Tim advises me that this is fuel proof. And I've covered other things with this since he said that. And, and it stands up really well to glow fuel anyway. So I'm going to uh, get this trimmed up now and start covering it and see how we get on. So we've got the underside first to be done and there's a couple of holes for, that are going to have to be in the cover. We've got the one for the fuel outlet, we've got the one on the top surface for the vent and also for the control lead to the elevator. Now rather than just plunging in a, a scalpel and making a hole, I thought I would uh, punch a hole in with my hole punch and just try and make that a little bit neater than a, than, than a slit. And also if, if I do a slit with a scalpel, it's, it, it, it can just run and run a little bit 
whereas hopefully a circular hole will be less likely to, uh, to, to rip. Now, I've measured, I'm going to bring the, the covering up around the front edge and just around the top and I've measured that to be 60 mil down from where I want the end to finish. So I'm going to put a pencil mark there, which I can just about see, and, uh, and I'm going to punch this hole. But to punch the hole, I'm going to use uh, a piece of card underneath because it will, if I just try and punch the hole into uh, this solar text, it won't work. But by putting it on a piece of card, good grip, little bit of a twist, I come out with, uh, with a nice circular hole. So uh, that's what I'm going to do and then we'll cover this. Well, I've now got this covered and this uh, Solar Tex has gone on lovely, really nice. 
goes around those corners beautifully, shrinks lovely and it's very robust. Just right what I need for this model. Problem is Solvertex isn't uh, available anymore, they've gone out of, of business, which is, uh, which is a, real, uh, a real shame. Now, the next thing I need to do is to get the pod fitted. I've given that a quick coat of black paint, I still need to do finish it off on that side. The, the paint I'm using, it's just black emulsion from a tester pot I had lying around. Uh, I'm not sure how that will stand up, but I think it will be okay because the whole model is going to get a covering of this uh, Wilco quick drying varnish, which you can get here in the UK. And Tim says it's uh, fuel proof for, for diesel, so that should be ideal. So I think covering that and covering this emulsion will be fine to, to protect the wing. Now I said earlier that Tim had suggested five coats. Uh, I, I'm wrong on that. I, I was talking to him just very quick, very responsive, very helpful, so thanks Tim. Uh, he said two coats, which sounds a lot more realistic. So I'll be giving the whole model two coats once I've got the pod fitted. Now to fit the pod, I'm going to put it in place, mark it, remove a little bit of the solar text, epoxy it in, and then once it's good and dry, I'll be drilling down and putting in a couple of dowels to hold it nice and secure. I'm going to give it the one coat, oops, the one coat of varnish, and then I'm going to sew the elevator on with this uh, this thread I've got and I'll use figure of eight stitching and then once that's done I'll give it another final coat just to uh, just to seal it but we'll come back and have a look at that and, and, and see how it's going. Well I've now got the wing finished and I'm really pleased with it. I've got the engine mounted, still got nylock nuts to put on there instead of these just these normal nuts but I'll, I'll do that at a, a later stage and I've got the elevator on, it's all connected up and I've used figure of eight stitching and we've got a nice smooth action on that so I'm quite, quite pleased with that. The covering went on lovely as I said before that solar text is really nice and then a couple of coats of varnish and that's just sealed all the joints so it should be super fuel proof now. I, <laughs> I did I did have a slightly thick piece of um, uh, the varnish on this part of the wing here where you can see there's a mark and I tried to wipe it off which was a mistake and uh, it's left a little bit of a mark there but I have to remind myself that actually at the end of the day this is a trainer combat wing which you know is going to take a few knocks so it'll be fine but I've, I've really enjoyed building this and the kit has been from Tim and Hobbit Hobbies has been fantastic and really really good value for money I, I don't know how he does it for the cost of it so all I can say now is I'm dead excited about getting out and flying this or at least learning to fly it and uh, let's Hope it stands up to, me, <laughs> to the punishment I'll give it. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these series of build videos and I hope you'll come back and see how we get on with the, with the flight. Anyway, we'll see. <laughs>